hello friends uh, now uh, in a previous class we have completed the one of the fibrocystic changes in breast which is non proliferative fibrocystic change in the breast which is this one and now let us now deal with proliferative fibrocystic change in the breast proliferative fibrocystic changes uh this proliferative fibrocystic changes is of two types which is epithelial hyperplasia hyperplasia and the second one is uh, sclerosing adenitis adenosis so first let us deal with uh, epithelial hyperplasia so epithelial hyperplasia so as the name says epithelia hyperplasia hyperplasia is increase in layers of epithelial cells which are both in blood ducts and lobules so this epithelial hyperplasia may be in ducts or lobules it may be in ducts then it is called as ductular hyper ductal hyperplasia if this is in lobes then it is called as lobular hyperplasia these lobular hyperplasia and these lobular hyperplasia should be differentiated with um, this sclerosing adenosis as they both will have uh, similar features uh, so epithelial hyperplasia it is completely benign benign but sometimes there may be atypical features so it is mainly benign but rarely there are a typical changes right so what are, what is the microscopic picture so first this epithelial hyperplasia there is proliferation to more than double layers it's not just two layers but more than two layers of epithelial cells are seen both in ductal and lobule and lobular and in lobe lobe so this uh, is of two types as i have said so one is uh, ductal hyperplasia and the other is lobular hyperplasia so here ductal hyperplasia is divided into three types and it is also called as uh, hyperplasia of usual type so it is normal usual type and the other one is lobular hyperplasia uh, which involves uh, hyperplasia of ductules and lobules and this is always atypical so here ductal hyperplasia is of three types the first one is mild hyperplasia the hyperplasia uh, seen is very mild and it consists of uh, just three layers of this is the basement name yeah. this is the basement membrane above the basement membrane there are just three layers of cells 1 2 3 yes then mild hyperplasia only three layers of cells three layers above basement membrane in duct so if i wanted to draw it in a duct it will somewhat look like this so one layer two layers second layer and the third layer so though it completely fits but something some, somewhat looks like this with three layers right 
द सेकेंड वन इज मॉडरेट हाइपरप्लेशिया हियर द सेल्स फिल अप द टोटल ह्यूमन सी हियर यू कैन सी द ह्यूमन हियर दो इट अपियर्स टू बी फिलिंग अप द टोटल बट इन रियलिटी डजेंट फिल अप द टोटल बिकॉज देर आर जस्ट थ्री लेयर्स सो दिस इज द ह्यूमन हियर बट इन मॉडरेट हाइपर प्लेशिया इट कम्प्लीटली फिल्स अप द ह्यूमन सो दिस मे बी फोकल एंड समटाइम्स दे मे फॉर्म epithelial projection so let me draw first so this is uh, it may completely fill up there may be many layers many layers many layers many layers right all this may be of cells with many layers of cells not one not two many right and they completely fill the ductal lumen and sometimes uh, there may be uh, like um, Uh, so this is usual type, and there may be a uh, papillomatosis. That is, papillary projections may be seen. Like for example, this is the thing, and it may be like this. Right. So this is papillomatosis, which is ductal papillomatosis. right uh this is one type and the second one is florid papillomatosis right it is this this is the same ductal and florid papillomatosis is the same but here these uh, uh, papillomas are extensive so here these are more extensive fine and the third variety is it will completely fill the lumen with some fenestrations or holes with it fill the lumen completely just as i said before with small slits right with just slight slits so this is one slit or this is one slit and filling it completely so these are the three main three types of moderate ductal hyperplasia so the final one is atypical ductal hyperplasia so here atypical ductal hyperplasia should be distinguished from the carcinoma <laughs> this is the fourth the third one so atypical ductal hyperplasia it is necessary for it to be distinguished from a carcinoma because here the proliferated epithelial cells uh, fill up the lumen completely with uh, which produce cribriform pattern it is like so this is a duct and it fill ups completely like it fill ups completely and these fill up in this way and there is some cribriform that is cribriform is something like uh, small small holes it is it will be something like this so these are the holes so this is cribriform pattern so all these cells uh, would uh, have would be in the would fill up completely with cribriform platter and the nuclear atypical right with atypical nucleus uh, the individual cells uh are uniform in shape but the nuclei are uh, even elongated mostly they are elongated nuclei you can see the elongated nuclei clearly so right uh so what are the features of atypical one so atypical one basically have uh the uh atypical cells fill the lumen giving cribriform appearance right it is giving cribriform appearance and the cells are uniform uh with elongated nucleus 
right and the final one which is lobular hyperplasia and it is atypical and it is related to lobular carcinoma in situ right and this should be differentiated by having uh, atypical cells it has atypical cells whereas lobular carcinoma in situ don't have any atypical cells so this is the proliferative fibrocystic changes so in this we have learned about non proliferative fibrocystic changes in that in this lecture we have learned only one of this proliferative fibrocystic change which is epithelial hyperplasia so these are the uh, these of two types ductal hyperplasia and lobular hyperplasia ductal hyperplasia has mild changes moderate and atypical changes lobular hyperplasia is always atypical so these are the diagrams which i do uh, in our next class we would learn about sleep adenosis in in our next class we would learn about the sclerosing adenosis and we would um, learn about uh, uh, the gynecomastia and we would close the non neoplastic lesions of the breast okay friends bye